it's 1999 again. Like the internet was just created. So there's tons of projects, there's tons of excitement that, and like, yeah, a lot of them are gonna go to zero. Like a lot of them may not have lasting value, um, but this genie is not going back inside the bottle. Like the idea right. that like now, especially like digital artists can actually have collectors markets. You know, the fact that mu musicians can, can release their music in like a collectible form, you know, that it, it's, that like that's not going anywhere that's going to continue to evolve and like i think right now you know some of the companies being built right now and some of the projects are going to be like the web 3 equivalents of like your you know your amazons and your googles and like all that <laughs> Welcome, Cheat Codes Podcast. We're back, and we're back with the legend Matt Medved. Thanks for being here, bro. We appreciate it. Yo, yeah. thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. It's great to be back in LA. Great to see you guys, dude. Yeah. Thanks for being here. My pleasure. It's uh, it's kind of crazy because uh, we were just in Miami, and there was this crypto convention the yeah. day that we were doing a show. And I had no idea you're like some crypto whale now, basically. <laughs> <laughs> crypto whale in training. Let's yeah, yeah. Let's say that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we saw a picture in the, our group chat from, from Kevy. Yeah, I saw a picture when we were at Story. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah. We were at Story. Uh, Blau was DJing. Uh, tons of like NFT collectors and enthusiasts and artists who probably hadn't been out of the basement in like six months. Yeah, we're, all, right. we're all mingling. It was great times. And uh, yeah, I ran into Kevy and I was like, this is amazing, and yeah. uh, it, it was it was super fun, and uh, it it was it was kind of like Miami Music Week. Yeah, it was, but just like a hell of a lot nerdier, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it did feel like that for those that, like haven't been paying attention. This last weekend, there was like the the Logan Paul Mayweather fight. There was a crypto convention, and I know you guys were going out to like every club in Miami, and everything was packed, like every pool party, yeah. everything. But I mean, for those uh, that are listening that don't know who you are, you started Billboard Dance. Yeah, yeah. Founded Billboard Dance. Uh, I was editor in chief of Spin Magazine, and uh, I actually just founded NFT Now, uh, yes. which is my new NFT media company uh, with my awesome co-founders Alejandro and Sam. And uh, we just did a fundraising round, and uh, are about to scale it. And we're really excited. Woo! Hell yeah, dude! You're yes, always bro. you're always fucking grinding. Thank you, man. Yeah, I love it's it. you know, it's uh, I'm really excited about NFTs. Like I, I really feel like in some ways. I haven't felt this passionate about something as I have as since I say like when I started Billboard Dance, you know, like wow. it's just uh, it's it's just like a new frontier. And like the best part is, is that so many of my friends from the dance and electronic music space are getting involved as well. So it's like a lot of a lot of old friends, familiar faces and also new friends, new faces yeah, and man. new technologies every day. Like the space moves so quickly. That's crazy. You see, it seems like you're always pushing the culture forward. Is that something that you're really like focused on? You like love doing that a hundred percent man like yeah. my whole thing like if i'd like sum it up is about uplifting artistry you know and like just finding like even at billboard dance was all about like finding artists that like that i you know like, i can swear on the podcast oh like, yeah, the yeah. Artists, whatever I, you want. artists i fucked with you yeah. know and like i'd be like yo like i, I think that this artist has potential i want to like help provide the platform take them to the next level and like it's so it's so exciting and fun doing that in in this new space too because i feel like it's so new and like people can really move the needle for each other like i'll watch artists co-sign each other and like you know it'll it'll really be career changing and so like the fact that i'm kind, I'm kind of building like a cure a curation platform where we can do the same and be able to kind of move the culture forward and bring like bring the culture into this space because right now it's like it's still pretty niche you know right. nfts obviously experienced its first mainstream boom a lot of big names coming through but like relatively speaking like a fraction of like the world knows about it so right that's true yeah oh i there's something i kind of talked about this on like one of our last podcasts but like what is it about djs that just they're all into crypto man we're all <laughs> We were Yo, talking about that a second ago. So we are all nerds, man. <laughs> like, we are all nerds, right? At the end of the day, like, you know, we're like, I always say dance electronic music is like firmly fixed on like 
the frontier of like the like cutting edge of technology. Right. Like, so, you know, like just by virtue of, you know, being able to know how to like, you know, spend hours on loops in front of, you know, in Ableton or whatever your, your DAW is, even knowing what a DAW is, like, you know, like there's a certain like nerdiness that comes with it, I think. Right. And, and, and you know, even outside of just nerdiness, like a certain like embrace, embracing of like technology, right? Like, totally. Like even just to like, you know, technology has always moved music, moved music forward and helped with music's development. And Dan and electronic music is like so so firmly tied to like new technology so like if you're if you're in the plug on like new technology and you're looking at what's going on like how could you ignore this like revolution that's happening too you know so yeah. it makes a lot of sense to me why a lot of djs are plugged into the space and you know back in like 2016 2017 when i was it was kind of like you know as the waters were rising in crypto and like billboard dance was like firing on all on all cylinders um i really noticed that and i started doing coverage around that and you know guys like blau guys like rac who were like early to to that and we're doing like stuff with music and blockchain so it's like it's all it's 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 really fun to see like we've always been i think dance and electronic music like we've always been early adopters uh, of technology and uh, i think it's no different here yeah i i remember blau did a festival and he did it on the blockchain and yeah. What what were some of like the technological advantages to doing that? I for, I kind of forget right now. But was he like having them request certain things? Like, so it's interesting. I actually advised on that project. So uh, it, hey. it was it was it was interesting. I think it was kind of ahead of its time. Um, originally, there was going to be like it was our music festival. There was going to be an OMF token, um, and uh, the idea was like that you'd be able to sort of like reward super fans and fans like with the token who like were going to go to festivals within that network. Um, so like, you know, if people were kind of engaging and using that token, um, they could get access to merch, et cetera, and like all this. But um, there was a lot of like, there, back in those days, there was also um, a lot of like questions around the regulation around all like right. around tokens like that. And, and if they would constitute a security under the SEC. And um, Justin did like his research really well. Like he, he is honestly like almost a legal expert on this stuff. Like I trust him as much as I trust a lawyer. And um, ultimately it turned out to be like, too risky of a of a move to, to take it in that direction is my understanding, um, and then there was a whole you know the SEC did a whole like crackdown too. But like right. what's actually kind of cool though is that um, and and you know the crackdown didn't affect that. It was just sort of like put an end to those plans. Um, but Justin actually had this really cool thing where he had he like if people found him at the festival, they would get like a loyalty badge, which was essentially an NFT. And he was like walking around the festival. He's getting mobbed by fans who were like trying to scan the QR code on him. And that's like he, he actually cites that as like one of those moments that tipped him off to the like the, the power of like digital ownership and, and you know, the wow. power that like that technology would have going forward. So it, it's kind of like. An, so it, if, he, if they scan the QR code, they owned that digital like footprint of that moment, I guess. Is that the, kind of the idea? It would be like almost like it was like a loyalty badge, you know, and it'd be like so they could show their friends like I was actually with blau and this is my proof totally totally and like and not only and then and then there was a limited number of them and he said like he got mobbed by fans and like they they ran out of them really quickly okay. and it was just sort of one of those things where he was like oh like this could it's almost like a glimpse in the future you know right that's really crazy wow how exclusive it is people are like oh i want that there's only 200 of them like, yeah I want that. it's that the idea of digital scarcity which, yeah. which as you know like powers the nft space it's yeah it's, it's a like, whole, new, whole new wave whole new wave yeah. you know but it's interesting because like my um, so my my dad is a brain doctor. Has like nothing to do, you know, but, he, but he's a huge music fan, and he raised me on great music. And he actually collects music memorabilia. Oh. So my dad has like really dope, like kind of like rare memorabilia from like the Beatles. That's like his favorite band. Oh, wow. And like Shit. and so like I grew up with, like with the idea of like music memorabilia, and it's it's kind of the same idea. It's like it's scarce, you know. It's it, it has a certain cultural cachet, and of course, like it's worth more when that act is no longer, you know, like you know when there's a limited amount. It's like there's not going to be any new like like you know sign Beatles you know yes. uh, uh, you know works and stuff like that so it, it when when um, when I got exposed to the world of like music uh, music's intersection with NFTs uh, it, it kind of clicked for me I think a little quicker than, than for some people just because I had been exposed to like the traditional market right yeah, that, that reminds me of like when OJ Simpson he actually went to jail because he beat somebody up trying to get his old memorabilia back and yeah. he like found the guy that owned his Heisman trophy because he was probably super young and was like oh, someone's willing to buy this for like 100 grand or 20 grand, whatever it is, like done. And then years later, even after the OJ case becomes a big thing, it's probably worth millions now. Like imagine if you had the Heisman Trophy of OJ Simpson. So he's like, give me it back. Like just force somebody to give it, give it back. So he went, to, he went to jail for that. So it's like, you, 
you don't know. But my whole point with that, <laughs> my whole point of that is, is, is you don't know, even if you're the person and it's your work and you have confidence in your work, like you don't know how valuable right. it is. He couldn't have predicted, you know, going on trial, had this huge famous trial for like murdering or not murdering right. his girlfriend. Like, yeah. And that made him more valuable. Um, like, you know what I mean? Right. Same thing with these NFTs. Like who knows what they're going to be worth? Like if it, some you know, athlete does sells some crazy clip and then in five, 10 years, he ends up being the next Michael Jordan. Then, right. And that suddenly becomes something, you know, worth a lot of value. So totally. And like one thing that I, I always, I, I'm glad you brought up sports memorabilia actually, cause it's one of the areas, like when I'm explaining NFTs to people who aren't like super familiar, it connects it. it yeah. It makes sense. Cause I'll be like, yo, like digital baseball card. It, exactly. Like before right. any of us were even born, like our, our society accepted that like baseball cards have value, right? Yeah. Especially rare baseball cards. And like you, look at it it's a piece of cardstock you know what right. i mean it's not about that it's about what it represents and right many there are and so and, exactly like yeah. a mickey like a rare like a rookie mickey mantle card costs like less than 50 cents to make but costs like five million dollars to buy right, <laughs> right. And, it, and this is just a digital version of that except what's cool about it is like a it can't be like forged like there's a proof of authenticity b you can't like damage it by like you know like storing it improperly yeah. mm -hmm. c you can like transfer it anywhere in the world like relatively quickly and securely and then the coolest thing i think when it comes to artists and music and all that is that you can program the smart contract so that the, the means of exchange so that creators can actually continue to share in the value of it like yeah. it's it's kind of become accepted in the like in the art nft world like the crypto art world that um like original artists will get like 15 to 20 percent of all secondary sales in right. perpetuity if it stays in the, the same uh, platform which can be really life-changing for like you have all these stories of like artists that like sold their like finest works at like for pennies and then they right. see it at like sotheby's or christie's for like millions but like they don't see any of that That's money so true. And, yeah. it's, and it's cool because like now they can right and, and unlike like the music industry we're like you know we're, we're like getting getting your royalties and stuff can be a a bit of a headache sometimes like th this all happens automatically on the blockchain via smart contracts That's so true. Yeah. like like so many different artists have like sold their songs as like theme songs that for shows that end up being massive but they only got a one-time payment where it's like oh man sold a, you know, the rights for a hundred grand and it ends up being a show for 20 years, but they could have made millions and millions of dollars where it's like, it's the same idea, huh? Totally, right. totally. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, it's like the way I always, the way I kind of explain to people, it's like, it's 1999 again. Like the internet was just created. So there's tons of projects, there's tons of excitement that, and like, yeah, a lot of them are going to go to zero. Like a lot of them may not have lasting value. Um, but this genie is not going back inside the bottle. Like the idea right. that like now, especially like digital artists can actually have collectors markets. You know, the fact that mu musicians can can release their music in like a collectible form. You know, that it, it's that like that's not going anywhere. That's going to continue to evolve. And like I think right now, you know, some of the companies being built right now and some of the projects are going to be like the Web three equivalents of like your you know your Amazons and your Googles and like all that. So. Right. Yeah, and I'm curious what you think of this theory about NFTs. Like when I was in high school, the whole issue was like Metallica was pissed because people were pirating their music and everyone was getting downloading their music off of LimeWire. And then it was like, well, how do we solve this? And then streaming kind of came. And that was kind of like the short term solution of now there's more money in the music industry. Is NFT going to solve that like piracy or could it or a blockchain? It's a great question. Um, you know, there are a number of projects that are working to see if that if that can happen. Um, you know, uh, there's there's a great project Audius um, that's like that's like trying to recruit like re, like build a, like a streaming ecosystem on blockchain. There's another one like Catalog Works. Um, there's like my, my friend Jesse Grushak founded a, 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 a star called Ujo that was like all about the music rights and royalties. I think everyone recognizes that there's that potential. Um, you know, Blau's working on some really cool stuff too in the music space. Everyone re recognizes that there's that potential, um, and people are figuring out like how how we make it happen. Um, but but there's definitely there's, there are de I think there's definitely ways to disrupt what's currently going on in a way that is uh, empowering for artists and and helps them get their due. Yeah, because it's like if you're uh, back in the day, you had vinyl, and then all of a sudden that vinyl was never printed ever again. That that vinyl goes up in value. But it's like now for artists, it's like people just listen to it on demand and it doesn't, it's the same value every time. It doesn't go up in value, but you saw, uh, what was it? Kings of Leon, they released their album as an NFT. And it's like, if you're a big fan of them, the only way you could listen to that album is if you got that. Totally, totally. And it's interesting. Cause like, 
you know, to me, I think the real opportunity for, music, for musicians in the NFT space is doubling down on fandom and access. Because, look, like, as I mentioned, my dad is a, was, you know, is a, a music memorabilia collector, but, like, honestly, like, the, the, in the traditional market, the, the collectibles that really, like, appreciate and value are, like, you know, Beatles, Elvis, like, Stones, like, Jimi Hendrix, like, guys who are gone, you right. know? So it's like, it's like, all right, like, unlike the art world necessarily where like if there's someone like a contemporary artist could like you know go exponentially higher in value during their lifetime like i feel like in the music space the real value kind of derives more from uh you know the fa like the fandom and the idea that like someone who buys your nft all of a sudden like has this kind of like ongoing like bond or like this connection with you that like you could then start rewarding them and be like yo like if you bought this cheat codes nft um you'll and you know, you'll get like backstage access at like our shows or like you'll right. be the first to know about like these exclusive merch drops or like you'll be the you know you'll be the ones to like you know you'll be able to like collaborate on a song or something like, you can make like these different levels to it and that's worth a lot of money to, to some people you know right. like you yeah. know like the the idea like what's super cool is like um i think like the promise of the internet like uh is this idea there's this there's this treatise like kim kennedy's like um, like 1,000 true fans, and it's the, the idea that like um, you I know about that, yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like you don't you don't actually in theory need millions of fans to be a to be, have a successful right. career as a creative, right? Yeah. Um, uh, and Ken, he says he says in it like um, basically it's like you only need a thousand true fans to be successful, like. You know, they're, it, and, and by that I mean like the people who are going to buy your tickets to your shows, buy your merch, like you know, drive right. to the show, like like buy whatever you do, etc. The issue is that in Web two, we've like we have all these centralized social media platforms putting ads and algorithms in the way, yeah, and and capturing that value and like and disrupting that connection. So it it, it ends up being that like you need millions at, at, to, at scale to like to do it, but like. You like I think NFTs give you an opportunity to really cater to your super fans and right. um, and to like you know be able to reward them directly. And what's cool is you can actually track who they are. Like you can literally find their wallet address. Like right. you can literally send stuff to them. You don't need mailing addresses. You don't need to know like you know what I mean. Like one thing that's like super exciting is you can actually you you can actually tell who's listening to you, who's like engaging with your NFTs, who's buying your NFTs. Like right now like you know the the streaming services like take take all that data and they're not right. sharing it with everyone yeah you know like when we go on spotify it's like oh our largest city is mexico city so it's like hopefully we'll play a show there i guess like well, that's how we use that data that like we're not like let's send a gift box to all of our loyal fans in mexico city like yeah, where exactly. do they live i don't know anything, anything about them yeah would you almost compare it to like almost like fans having like almost like stock in your these artists slash these artists but also being in, like more of a community like a connected way you know what i'm saying yeah. like artists can actually like you know give you gifts for invest not investing but like you know in, sort of investing in these projects in a weird way because it's like you're you're paying money to like to own these you know things from these artists that you're hoping that will gain value over time. Totally. Right? Like yeah, and like you're you kind of getting like a pe like you're getting a piece of them in a sense, and right. like you know and they it, get bigger, it, that NFT gets bigger. Exactly. So it's sort of like a well, like you know, I always think about like you know if. You know, like I was early to a lot of acts at Billboard Dance. Like, you know, my first ever feature was like Kygo when he'd never played outside Norway in like 2014. I was just like, I believed in him. You know, like right. if I could have bought Kygo stock, I would have. Right. And, exactly. and I would have done really well. You know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know. Right. You're like, I'm gonna buy all the NFTs and for this artist. Right. I know they're gonna be big. I believe in them. Like, totally. And right. and there are like some interesting projects thinking about like how you you might even be able to go beyond that and like you know actually you know own a share of like their 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 publishing or their or or like you know the upside of a song and 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 doing that without being a security is a whole the whole thing regular from a regulatory perspective but um there's some there's some very smart people working on that right now so right um and uh you know i i, I want to see it succeed because like to me it's like you know I, I think that um the music space especially like i think that um like just looking at the strip at the current like uh models like models like like musicians create so much value and they like streaming doesn't let them capture it right you know and like I, I do think that there's a better there's a better way out there and um i mean technology has always driven this forward right like it technology is what took us from vinyl to 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 cds to napster to you know the streaming services and like it's it's not going to end there like it just, technology always keep, technology always wins right, right. <laughs> yeah. wow 
So your company is called NFT Now. Yes, yes. And you said it was a media company. So are yes. you guys making media about NFTs or is there more to that? It's a great question. So the last thing that I ever wanted NFT Now to be is just a traditional media company covering NFTs. Like we, I, I think that in Web2, which is like, you know, how we've known the internet for most of our lives, um, media companies create a lot of value but can't really capture it, right? Yeah. And so in, you know, the, there's all the issues with like the ad-based, you know, revenue model, which I think is broken. Uh, yeah, and it's cra crazy, like some of these YouTubers, they'll get demonetized, but then YouTube still monetize, they still run ads on their content. Yeah, it's like, what, yeah. it's like what you should be able to control but I understand it, but that's what happens when you let like centralized platforms run, run the show, you know? And so right. that's like the promise of decentralization. And so with NFT now, like, you know, what I wanted to build is essentially like, like we're really like best in class, like pioneering example of what a web three media company can be. And so like, yeah, we'll be doing like, you know, we're going to do like, you know, what all the usual things like, you know, the social accounts, we got an Instagram at NFT now, you know, it's Twitter at NFT now, um, the TikTok, et cetera. You know, we have a, 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 a a newsletter uh, podcast as well. Um, we don't have quite as many cameras as, as you guys, <laughs> but, uh, but but we're, we're getting there. Hell yeah. And um, and we're, we're launching the website actually uh, next month, which I'm really That's excited it. about. And but yeah, like there's a lot of other like interesting like Web3 integrations. Like we are planning to launch a token, like a social token around it and try and basically set up this like Web3 membership model where by holding a certain number of tokens, it gets you access to different levels of content. It's the same idea as almost like a membership subscription model, you know, but but kind of living really in, in that ecosystem and and being able to kind of like in a way it's like if you believe in nft now you can actually in, invest in the future of that company by holding the token you know right and um and then like also thinking about how we tokenize certain elements of um of, of the content that we're doing related to like our, our editorial um side and content side so it's been super exciting like the, you know the backstory is like um like at the end of last year, Bla I got on the phone with Blau because I saw he was doing all the NFTs and you know, he's been a friend for a long time and he explained it to me and like I had multiple light bulbs going off in my head. I was like, this is going to change everything forever. And um, you know, with like Billboard Dance, like I, I ran that Instagram myself, like I built that, you know right. what I mean? Like I, I built the like social handles there. Like, you know, I know how to like, you know, kind of document that kind of uh, stuff. And so I was just getting really down the rabbit hole. Like I was in the clubhouses meeting all the artists and all that and was just getting super passionate about it. And I was like, I really want an outlet to like be able to like post art I like and like you know just kind of like document this journey of discovery and I just started doing it and it just started growing and like all these artists and execs started following it and then when the boom happened like organic growth just started snowballing and I was like talking to some of my friends in the media space like Sam and Alejandro who have been friends for years and they were like yo like let's scale this and let's make this a proper uh, media company but again not just a traditional media company like we're, we're really um we're hoping to, to do something that, you know, other, um, you know, other sort of media brands might be able to follow and, and, uh, and emulate as, as we kind of move further and further into the space. Would you say the mission and the purpose of it is to educate or just to help people discover like other NFT artists? Both. Both. Oh, okay. so that's a great question, actually, man, because like, you know, what we talk about a lot is how like we want to cater to both like the, the purists and the tourists. Uh, in the NFT space, because like right. we've got that's the challenge, you know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Like we've, and one thing I've always keep like, you know, I I've been dabbling in the crypto space since like 2013, you know, but like. I wow. really was, was dabbling because like music, art and culture is what I'm passionate about. Like I'm not a finance guy at the end of the day, you know what I mean? And so like for me, it was like once it started disrupting the, the area that I'm passionate about in a way that actually uplifts artists, that I was like, this has my full attention now. Um, but there are a lot of people like, you know, we're just getting into it. And like so there's a learning curve with crypto and then there's also a learning curve with NFTs. And those are, I don't, I never like want to underestimate those learning curves. Like, so there's a lot of people trying to come into the space and it's not, it's not like plug and play yet, you know? Right. And so like, we want to be there for them. We want to handheld them. We want to give them the guides. We want to like, you know, we don't want to be like going over their heads. We want to welcome them. Like we want to welcome mainstream adoption. At the same time, we have like some of the top collectors, traders, like executives, artists following us as well. And we want to give them that like high level, like analysis, you know, like, you know, stuff that's really of, of value to them as well so it's about kind of uniting both um, and I think that's kind of where this idea of like this web3 membership model comes in is that like you know if you really if you want to go down the rabbit hole with us like you know 
we, we have a way. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking sick, bro. Yeah, thank Amazing, you, man. man. Like, it's, it's exciting. It's super exciting. And like, you know, uh, just like with, with um, you know, with, with Billboard Dance, it's like curation comes first, right? Like, it's just about, it's about, uh, I always said like Billboard Dance is, is for everyone. Like, you know, I don't personally listen to hard style, but I still like featured hard style artists in Bill yeah. on Billboard Dance, and like, right. and, I, and that meant a lot to that community because Billboard wasn't covering hard style. People artists, in Germany you know? do, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People in Germany listen to hard yeah, style yeah. still. Dude, hundred percent. Like, so. and, and I was I was living in Germany when I started writing for Billboard. I was I was living oh, in Berlin. Wow. Oh no yeah. way! And totally. Were, yeah, that's awesome. Shine a light on those artists that wouldn't normally get any platform on Billboard or anything. It, like that. Exactly. So I was like, yo, like you know, I have my personal taste, but like you know, I want to make sure everyone's represented, and I kind of I feel the same way with like the nft space you know um you know music and and art and culture obviously very close to me and that's kind of where the roots of nft now come from but this is going to be touching every space like we haven't even begun to see like the way that nfts are going to like disrupt the comedy like market or yeah. like or right. obviously like you're seeing athletes getting in now but like you look at what like what uh, dapper built with nba top shot like that's kind of a glimpse into the future, I think, because if you, I don't know if you guys have used NBA Top Shot at all, but it's like, it's probably like one of the easiest onboard ramps. Like you don't need to have a crypto wallet. You don't even need, like the word NFT doesn't even appear on the site. You know, like okay. it's like there's, you can use US dollar, fiat, like you're just like buying digital, like, you know, moments and cards. They are NFTs, you know, but like it's such a smooth, like easy UX. And it's like okay. some, someone who's never like, you know, who, who's not like crypto savvy could still operate it. And I think that's the future, you know? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it has to become more simple and accessible. Like, otherwise people are gonna be like, uh, bro, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, like, everyone that I try to explain it to, I, I barely know shit about it, but when I try to explain it to people, like, I just don't get it. I'm like, well, it's kind of like, you know, there's like, ah, I don't get it. It's like, oh, yeah. they, we need to simplify it. And, and like the baseball card analogy was actually a really smart way of doing it as far as like, because everyone understands like, you know the, the idea of baseball cards and like well why is that worth a thousand dollars because we say we say it is because we just humans decided that that's how rare it is and that's what it costs be like okay like it, comparing those two things sort of makes a lot of sense to me so and i think totally. there's so many like uses for blockchain that's why it gets complicated because they're like oh like i was hearing the other day like a lot of times autopilot and smart cars with the self-driving they're going to be using blockchain in the future because they're essentially communicating with each other so that they don't crash into each other and yeah. like you need a way of doing that so it's like i would never have thought like in the beginning of crypto like they're going to be using cryptocurrency for driving cars like how does that make sense totally i've totally. never heard of that that sounds insane it's, it's wild how many like use cases there are now and that's what's like that's what's really exciting to me about like the current market and like you know i've actually this this is like my third crypto boom that i've like seen because like i remember like 2013 is when like i first got involved and like then like 2017 yeah 2017 uh, was like every four years total, total well, yeah and it's like and it's crazy because like you know but like 2017 it was all like a lot it was still a lot of just like speculation on like what a project could be and now like value in many there's still a ton of speculation don't get me wrong but now like there's actual value tied to use case like you know you look at like the top like market cap coins and you're like oh like uniswap like that does something like it's like it's the biggest decentralized exchange it's not just like someone's white paper yeah. and like a bunch of marketing you know what i mean right. so it's like the what we have to remember is like even like in the in the like grand scheme of things, we are really all still very early to this. Like it's and this is sort of like a once in a generation, once in like a, a lifetime like technological development that's going to be impacting everything. And it's like it's still it's still volatile. It's still evolving. You know, in some ways, it still feels like the wild west, right? Totally. And um, but that's like what makes it so exciting, I think. And you know, like just like anything, like any technology, it can be used like there are good purposes and bad purposes. And like I think we a lot of people see a ton of opportunity to like really empower creators because like one thing that's so exciting to me, like I always say, like look, like obviously, like you know, the I come from the media world, so I know I know how. Uh, I know how headlines work and I know how all that, you know, like, so, you know, I know that like what gets the clicks and like what, what gets all the attention is like this project sold for this many million, you know, and like, right. and, and all that, but that's cool. But like, what's actually exciting to me is day to day, like the kind of like unsung stories of like, I'll see, so I'll see like digital artists being like, I just quit my job because I am now can support like myself, you know, they're not maybe not, they're not making millions, but like I can now support myself. I can make a living off my own creative vision instead of having to do client work. Yeah. Right, and, exactly. and, and they never thought that was possible. Like that's the other thing that's super exciting to me is like, 
I always say like, you don't go into a career in digital art for the money, right? Like right. It, yeah. it's not like an easy career path. Like you're, you're doing a lot of client work, you know, like, I mean, like in the music space, like we all work with like, like the dopest, sickest 3D, like visual artists and stuff, right? right? And like, they're awesome and like, they do all the dope visuals, but like, that's still client work for them, even if it's cool. Totally. Like, you know, they're, they're doing what you tell them to they're do. They're doing what you tell them to do. Yeah. And like, and you know, the idea that like now they can actually make these works out of their own imagination, their own vision, and sell them as like pieces to be collected in the same way as like, you know, I was interviewing a, an amazing artist named Victor Mosquera who used to, he did a lot of work for Odessa on their vocals. Okay. And he's, I remember he said like, and he's become like a, a top like crypto artist. And he said like, he's like, it, like digital artists can finally be artists. You yeah. Know? And so like create a vibe and like a brand that lasts forever. Right. And like, what's cool is like, that doesn't mean they're going to stop doing client work. Yeah, that's like a decision for each of them, but they just don't, it's not like they're reliant on that. Right. It's like the know? only way they can survive as an artist Ex is to do client work. Exactly. That's the way it's been for a long time, I'm sure. So. And I think, I think it's going to even out the dynamics a bit in the market too, because like all of a sudden, like, you know, it's, 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 le it's a more of an even playing field. It's like, it's like, okay, this is a cool opportunity, but it's like, you know, they, they also have like alternatives that they can do too. So, right. and I, and I think it's cool to see, like, I love seeing like, you know, musicians come into the space and work with them in equal partnership and be like, yo, like, you know, we're both, both our names are on here. And like, we're like, we're like, it's like equal billing, you know? And yeah. like, and it's cool. Cause like, you know, a lot of these guys have grinded for so long. And, and what I, like I, what I said, like, you know, you digital artists don't come into it for the money. So a lot of these guys never expected to be in this position. And they're all, a lot of them are, are you know, they, they got into it for the right reasons. They got like, you know, they're, they're, they're in it for, for, for the art and for the creativity. And so that's what I think has built such a special community around NFTs. Um, like whenever you get in, you, you always hear talk, people talk about the community and it's like, it, that's the reason it's like people, people co-promote each other. They co-sign each other. Artists are actually, artists can be impactful collectors, you know, like right. you look at like the traditional art market or even just like, you know, the, the top collectors aren't artists. They're like, you know, wealthy, you know, they're the traditional wealth, they're traditionally wealthy, right? Um, because artists aren't capturing the value that they're creating. But now it's like some of the top collectors in the space are actually artists, which is kind of cool. Wow, it's wild. That's amazing, man. Wild world. That's crazy. I mean, what would you say to people that, first of all, NFTs are non fungible tokens yeah. for anyone's like, what the hell are they talking about? <laughs> like, I have no idea what you're talking about. But like someone who doesn't know about crypto at all, like what would you say they should start with? Like how do you how do you get into it in like a safe way? Because like you were mentioning like Uniswap, I'm like I never yeah. heard of that before. <laughs> like I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, you know, obviously this is not financial advice, but <laughs> but uh, you have to say that. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. But honestly, like do like I always recommend people to do their research before they jump in. Um, I also recommend people who are like looking and like. I had a lot of artists, you know, early days, I was just like, started posting my NFTs all the time. It's like a lot of artists were like, how, like and musicians, like, how do I get in? And I was like, yo, like start just like collecting, just like, you know, like things you like, it doesn't have to be expensive. Just like, you know, a lot of people are under like, you know, because of those headlines, a lot of people are like, oh, like NFTs are just for the rich. And it's like, no, dude, like I bought my like first NFT for like $25. You know what I mean? Like, right, yeah. you know, it's like, you can like, you can dip your, your toe in the water. Um, but in terms of like, like there are a lot of good resources out there. Um, you know, I, I'd say like, you know, like I'd stay away from like the YouTube channels that tend to be like super sensationalist. A lot of them have an agenda. Um, but like there, there are some really good resources. Honestly, like I actually compiled like a whole list of resources. So if you're listening out there, you can hit me up at Matt Medved and like, I'm happy to like send you that list because I've oh, just yeah. been sharing it with everyone. And like, you know, it's, it's just like, I'm happy to spread the love, but like it, 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 it is important. It's a really good question because like a lot of people don't know where to start. And so like, you know, they're, they're, what I always tell people is like, you know, thinking about like what these projects actually do, like, you know, Bitcoin, the best way to think about it, and it's obviously an oversimplification, but it's like digital gold in a sense. It's yeah. like, it, it's a store of value. There's only going to be 21 million of them ever. So it's like, it's rare, it's scarce, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it's a hedge against inflation. And then like Ethereum, you know, Ethereum powers like the ecosystem on which like so much of this is built. Like most NFTs, there are like not all NFTs, but most NFTs that you hear about are built on Ethereum. Okay. Um, and there are other blockchains, but like Ethereum is like where like ground zero for NFTs, it's ground zero for like decentralized finance. The best way to think about Ethereum is like the app store of the internet or like the internet like operating system of like Web3. And then Ether is like 
the digital oil that like powers that ecosystem. So it's like it's a, it has a ton of utility. Like if you wanna if you wanna go on Super Rare, one of the big uh, NFT site uh, platforms, and buy buy an NFT, you're gonna have to have Ethereum to do it. You know, and so it's like when you think about it, you're like, okay, like these are starting to make sense. Like. And then you get to like some of them, you're like, okay, like, I don't know why this exists. Maybe it's a meme, maybe it's something else. Then, you know, like you, as I say, do your own research, but like there, you can definitely figure out which are like the worthwhile projects versus like the more risky or kind of, uh, you know, questionable ones. So. Right. Yeah, I know with NFTs, you're buying this digital art and I even heard that you can somehow like project it like into on your like a TV screen or yeah something. yeah so how does that work like you buy an nft then like where does it go it's like it's just on your phone it's like on a website it's like, on, like to a look at wallet? is it can you put it on a hard wallet man you can put it a lot of places but like yeah, yeah like you, you can like what's super exciting yeah like right now there's there, so there are a number of different displays that you can you can use honestly like I feel like they're okay, they're fine, but like someone's gonna develop just like the killer display yeah. like for it. Um, but you know what? A lot of what a lot of people are doing is like like yeah, sure you you can like display it on on your wall. I've seen that. It actually looks pretty cool. Um, but what a lot of people are building is like you know about the metaverse. The metaverse is like all these virtual worlds. We're about to yeah. go deep yeah. right now. Yo, We're yo, going deep. Like, yo, like yeah, this is this is your chance to this is your chance to. You the know. hell is the yeah. metaverse, guys? <laughs> the thing it has like real estate in it. Yeah, you can like purchase it's, real estate on the you blockchain. Can, yeah, that's exactly right. Like so, there are these virtual worlds. Some of them are like crypto voxels, Decentraland, Somnium Space. Yeah. It's basically VR worlds that exist on the blockchain. Um, and you can buy like virtual land there. You can build virtual galleries. Sotheby's just announced that they're creating a, a gallery in, in Decentraland. Wow. So like, like this is starting to get like mainstream adoption in a way that like would have been unthinkable like six months ago. You know, so it's like you buy your NFT, you hang it in a in a VR gallery, you put your headset on, and you connect with your friends who got the headset as well. And you're like, yo, come to my gallery, bro. I got some dope <laughs> art. Is it like, is that real? Is that am I spot on with that? Or I mean, teleport it, and you're there? And it's happening. It's happening and like the other thing that's really interesting is like if you think about it like um there are a lot of people who made a lot of money in crypto but were kind of like anonymous you know what i mean right. and like and art and and the art space and like it has always been sort of a way for the traditionally wealthy to build status and identity right by being patrons of the arts right and that's happening in a really interesting way in crypto art and in, in nfts where you have some of these like crypto whales, you know, who all of a sudden are becoming like these top collectors and like building brands and like and and these identities around like around themselves as collectors. Um, and some of them are building like crazy, crazy galleries in the metaverse. And it's cool because some of them are also like doing some of them are, are doing some like really cool charitable initiatives, too. And like and like there's a there's a, there's a shout out to, the, to this collector illustrator who um, he actually just uh, he has a Sevens Genesis Grant uh, Foundation where he like has this charity that he helps like artists who can't afford to mint their first NFTs. He like helps them like oh, underwrite awesome. the costs and like get them involved. So potentially like you know like empowering them to like you know be able to pursue a career there. Like it, it's it's really interesting because like you have like this whole new like collector class, and I think that's like one thing that is interesting about crypto in general is like it took it. Prior to, to all that, like it's in my eyes, like crypto in some ways, it's like one of the biggest wealth transfers that we've ever seen yeah. um, in in generations and like in you know in, in human history. And it, before that, it took us kind of a certain person to be at that like billionaire's table, right? Yeah, right. And yeah, no like middle or lower class person is collecting art. Right, and like, and it was also like, you know, you're of a certain mentality. You're probably like a super like cutthroat businessman or like businesswoman, or like you're like, you know, you, you come from a certain mold. Like, I, I don't want to be too overgeneralizing, but like, you know, it's just there were there were certain kind of people who were highbrow, like, yeah. pinky up, and, <laughs> and like, and a lot of them are like, you know, we're we're like business people first and foremost, versus like like lovers of the arts or like or right. people who like wanted to like to like nurture that and like what's amazing is now you have different people at the table because of crypto it's like you just have different people able to like use that platform and use that power and use that like financial might in ways that like i think you know can build community and uplift artists and like and help creatives and you know i'm but like you know it's like anything it's it's you know there's 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 gonna be good good actors and bad actors and you know selfless people and selfish people but it's just a, it's, it's refreshing to see some like really new kind of like motives and like and uh uh modus operandi kind of like levels yeah. of playing field it, yeah yeah exactly and like 
you know, it's really, it's really interesting to like see where it all goes. And again, like it's still so, like so such early days for the NFT space. Like, like I said, like this is my third crypto boom, but this is the first like real NFT boom. You could, you could say there was like a mini boom back in like 2017 with like crypto kitties and all that, but like that didn't take it mainstream. Like, right. like, you know, it was now, everywhere now you got like Eminem and the weekend dropping NFTs. Yeah, exactly. like, you know? Right. Yeah. yeah. So do you think where we're heading is basically like ready player one? Because just to give you a short little yeah. story, during the lockdown, we all of our shows were canceled, all of our tours were canceled. We started doing live streams, which was like new to us. We're like, all right, let's set up our studio with a green screen and we're performing to real people, but like they're not really in front of us. And then we did one that was actual VR show and we weren't even together. We were in separate houses. We were at our own houses with the VR headset <laughs> on so and we were just controlling our little bit Moji character while we were pretend DJing, you know, just say it, we sent ahead like a 30 minute set and they had a whole club that they built out almost like, I don't, I wouldn't say it's the metaverse, but it was like in this app on the Oculus, uh, I forget what it was called. It's like ours. It's like their version of MySpace, alt space or something. Alt space, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alt, space. alt spaces sure. or something like that. Um, so it was really weird. I mean, Trevor was stage diving like digitally and yeah, people wow. were putting their hands up. What so, was that like? Digital <laughs> stage diving? <laughs> we, were, we, were, we were laughing. We were like, this is the weirdest thing we've ever done. It was cool. It was just like super futuristic, but like we, it was our first time ever being like on like in a VR like world or whatever. And some of these people had been doing it for years and like yeah. were super comfortable with like the idea of just living in this like alternate universe. Totally. And, and we were like, this is so new to us. You know what I mean? This is like crazy. And they were like, yeah, this is normal. Like, which at a club, you know, we're like, what? This is insane. It's, it's, yeah. it's definitely the future though. Yeah, yeah. And look, like, I, I think like it's important to say like, you know, like I don't, I don't, I don't want it to become like Ready Player One, right? Like, like you know, dystopian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I, I think, I think, like you know, there, there will always be like an excess and a dark side to all technology, right? right. And like, I, I think this is no different. And it, this one's especially like, you know, it's especially um, like not dangerous, but like worth talking, worth discussing because it, it, it like once it develops, it's gonna feel real, you know? Yeah. And it is real, it is possible to get lost in it. And so like, but I don't, I still don't think personally that like, I, I know some people might gravitate towards that, but like, I still don't think there's any like substitute for real in-person interactions. Yeah, like, you know, you guys know this from like being able to like return to DJing, like what was that energy like to get back on stage? Like it's- uh, Yeah, you can't compare you, like a live stream to an actual live show. It's just like- Exactly. So much more just, Kind of fulfilling. Yeah. You know? And like, even if it, it were like, you know, a better avatar yeah, and, like, yeah. and all that. Like That's what still, I'm wondering. It, it's, I'm sure that it'll get there. Yeah. But, but I still don't think it'll replace, you right. know, like real in li life, like real like in person interaction. I, I think it's more just like, uh, oh, what was this movie? called i saw this movie back in the days called surrogates and like they had these like robot versions of oh, themselves yeah. and like they would control them from their homes because it was like well i'm not gonna go outside it's dangerous outside i'm gonna send my surrogate oh but then something weird happened where like the sur surrogates started dying but killing them while they were controlling it like in their pods oh, it's okay. like people think about covid like people were so scared to leave and it's like you have this safe way to interact with people on a much more in intimate way and you're safe you know what i mean so it's like uh, one of the things when we did it we did this like somebody was talking they had these haptic feedback suits so you put on the entire suit and you had the vibration okay, on like I, so it's like i'm gonna touch you and you feel like where i'm touching you or you feel heat or warmth or whatever it is so right trippy another wild thing about it is like like for example like in the alt space thing like they could they give you your own house or whatever so you show up in your in your house like and it's like beautiful looking. You're like, oh my God, I have like, like paradise. Outside, yeah. like whatever. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of people, you know, like anybody that you can like, if you can build like this mansion, virtual mansion in comparison to if you live in a one bedroom apartment and you're like, totally. well, in my, in my fake life, I have a mansion and I have 20 cars and I have whatever and it's awesome and a personal chef or whatever it is. But like in real life, it's just like, eh. It's so like, like they, yeah. yeah. I'm sure people could get just lost in the sauce, so we'll see where it goes. But totally, like there's there's a fine line between like empowerment and like escapism, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Totally. totally, that's true. Like all the people that were addicted to uh, World of Warcraft back in the day, mm -hmm. and now it's like times ten. Like this is a real world. Like this is like 
I've what? never played, but yeah, I'm not sure. What, I'm just saying. What, <laughs> yeah. what, what's wild to me, like, and I think we're like, it's gonna be, we're gonna need to like figure out like best practices and all these things. It's like for the kids who grow up, like, not, like always having known this technology. Cause like, I feel like we're like the last generation that remembers a time before ubiquitous internet, but is still yeah. like super savvy with it. You yeah, know, yeah, like, yeah. cause I feel like the generation before it's like, okay, like they're maybe on Facebook, but like, they're not like savvy, savvy. Totally. And then like, and then Gen Z it's like, they, they know. only know okay, okay. and like and it's going to be the same with like vr and like that and, and like the and like those technologies too and so like you know i mean you think about like how much technology has developed and like it's it's the same brains like our brains haven't had time to evolve really like yeah. to to catch up it's crazy yeah i mean i was still writing boobs on my calculator in math class <laughs> yeah. i didn't have an iphone you know yeah everyone shared their laptops like the, the, the it was like 12 laptops per like school like for, for like grade or whatever you have to share them that's crazy and everyone has like ipads in their backpacks and shit it's wild it is it is yeah uh, you know it's, it's one of those things too like but i always say this there's a, like a, as someone who believes in like the future of nfts and in and in this technology um you know i i think like we're also the last generations to grow up without the idea of digital ownership just being like something yeah, like it's right. it, you know it's like a lot of like people who don't who can't wrap their mind around this are like but i can just like like screenshot it or like right click save and I'm like yeah you can take a photo of the Mona Lisa too yeah exactly. you can you can buy a Mona Lisa on uh, you know on, on on Amazon right yeah, like right. you know like $15 but, but, but also like what you're saying is it you can you own it yeah yeah <laughs> with smart contracts and everything you can make the NFT actually have other functions besides just looking at it right I mean am I getting that right totally totally and um, yeah you can you can and um, and that's what's like super exciting I think for the future yeah of it. it's like this piece of artwork also grants you access to XYZ an exclusive club here or whatever it's like right. so taking a photo of it isn't you're not gonna get that right yeah. right and hundred percent and you know it's it's also like you look at like gaming the idea of skins and like Fortnite, like like digital ownership, like there are plenty of people like who have understood that for years and years and yeah, years, you know, right. and like and they'll pay it for it, yeah, they want it, like, and yeah. and it's like the one thing that I'll always if someone if someone um exactly and it, it, if like someone like I've talked to some people who like really just like aren't getting it, and I'm like all right, like let's talk about like the verified blue check. That, yeah. that is a that is a, a digital thing that has value, right? Like people pay for that, people want that, people people derive a sense of value or status from that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be no different, like in the metaverse, in like in VR, like you're going to want to look fly in the metaverse, like you know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like you're going to like you're going to want to have like that dope like limited edition, like jet, you know, it's the same idea as fashion, it's the same idea as like as any of this. It's like it's just a digital version of that. And like I also say, like what do you look at more, like your walls or your screen? Right, yeah, you know, true. like we're, we're, everyone's living their lives more and more online, and it's like you see it, like Gen Z and like and younger, they get this. They're like, like they, they don't need it to be explained to them. They're like, oh yeah, like I I want to have like the coolest stuff on like that's digital, yeah. and like be able to show that off to my friends and like all that and like all the stuff that exists around like hype beast culture and like sneaker culture and like all that. Like that's all. It's already starting to happen here, but it's gonna like it's gonna be huge once yeah. like. You know? Yeah, because I'm curious, like you could look at like online dating, for example, and like you're on, I don't know, Tinder or something, and maybe you match with somebody from like a different state or something like that. And it's like, how do they, they're just going off of like your photos or just these online indicators of, oh, is this guy cool? Does this person have value? Is this guy seem like a creep? Like, you know what I'm saying? So that that's going to... Imagine where that's going to go, where you're like interact, like these kids are playing Fortnite and they're, they're actually talking, having real conversations with people on Fortnite. And they're like, I want to look cool with this, this uh, magical sword or whatever, the, yeah. whatever they have. They just want to look cool. They're trying to get social value in that. So it's like, it's going to be the same thing. You buy like a digital Louis Vuitton coat that you look totally. cool and you're, I don't know. Yeah, totally, totally. And um, yeah, like, I mean, I'm all like, I'm excited for it, you know, because it's like. I mean, you know, this was a tough year for musicians, right? Like, with, you know, with touring, with touring, uh, you know, like shut down, and and a lot of a lot of musicians were able to make up some of that revenue from NFTs. Like, that's a great, that's awesome to me. You know, like I love to see that. You know, I, I love the idea of like musicians being able to like also like just from a creative standpoint. Like, you know, I, I DJ and I produce music too. So like, when I first found out about NFTs, I had like multiple light bulbs going off because I was thinking like future of media, future of like this, and I was also like creatively like. I have like a lot of loops I like, you know, like all these little loops that are just like dope. And like, I'm always like, oh, do I like, am I gonna make this into a full song? Like, do I have to like make it have like two drops and like a build and breaks? And like, does it have to be a certain amount of like, 
like time to get on a playlist for Spotify. It's like all these sort of like things we have to think about in the creative process. When at the end of the day, like the purest form of like that expression was just this kind of short form thing, 30 seconds a minute. And that can actually live as its own thing now and be like commercially viable as an yeah. NFT, you know, like you make it into like some really cool, like I've actually worked with, with a visual artist on, on a couple of them too. So it's like, have some, have some projects in the works there, but it's like, yeah. you know, it's like sort of being able to, to change the creative canvas. Right. Break the mold, not follow the structure of a traditional yeah. song or whatever it is. Yeah. How, how much of the, of this do you think will change the format of music? Cause like I was on a, a like a today's hits playlist, just driving around and like, a lot of the songs are now like actually two minutes long, not like two yeah, and two, and not, yeah. not like two thirty, like two minutes exactly. And then like TikTok obviously can only be, well, I think they just changed it, but originally it was only uh, 60 seconds. Um, uh, so it's like, and at the end of the day, like you're right, like people usually remember like the, the most memorable 30 to 60 seconds, you know, like what you know about rolling down and deep. And then they don't remember the rest of the song. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I mean? They just totally. remember that part. <laughs> totally, yeah. totally. It's gonna be really interesting to see like how how this all like integrates with live performance and stuff. And yeah. um, you know, I, I'm I'm a big fan of just like like being medium native. It's like, all right, if someone is on a Spotify playlist and just wants to hear like you know something that like that that would cater them to, like cool, that exists for them, right? Yeah. Um, if someone wants to like admire like what looks like a fine art piece but has a musical backdrop cool like you know right. like it's it's like rather, and rather than like forcing like musical output to all fit one mold like recognize like recognizing that it can it can exist in many different forms right absolutely and like and i think that liberates creators you know and like and, and i think it's liberating creatives across the board like you know one like NFT clubhouse is like a whole thing you know it's like that was a really that was a really important space like uh space for like uh, a lot of artists and people people in the community to connect during the the pandemic and during that rise and like i i, I found myself in a conversation with hannibal burris in oh, like, sick. and i was and we were talking about like like the same exact thing the idea that like having a shorter form like like creative different like creative canvas is just like super inspiring to him he had like this this like old school like behind the scenes like 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 old like video of him like performing stand up in some like random like like club or whatever and was like this is like great it means a ton to me it's like one of like my oldest performances or you know and he was just like like what what could i what can i do with it like i guess i could put it on instagram and get a bunch of likes i guess i could put it on youtube and get like a fraction of like you know whatever right. whatever but he's like or i can make it into like a one of one nft and like sell it to my super fans and like have it meet like you know this moment in time right and yeah, that's another that's, awesome. that's a super interesting thing too is to think about like what like around around music and experiences um capturing moments and and turning like like these moments into nfts that like people want to own in the same way that like same way we own like LeBron James doing like a like a sick like dunk on right. NBA Top Shot like maybe maybe we own your your stage dive when it's not digital <laughs> yeah right yeah I think so. didn't somebody buy the Charlie bit my finger and it's like the yeah video? like so somebody owns that like yeah. the epic video that uh, I think uh, like, Jack Dorsey sold his first tweet as an NFT oh yeah yeah, See, yeah he did just little moments in history that you're able to kind of sell off and people can exactly say, look and back at that like. And moment. that, yeah, dude, and like that's why like you see like the CryptoPunks thing, like that project is like it's a super like uh, respected OG project. It wasn't the first uh, NFTs, but it was among some of the first, and it, it's one of the ones that's really caught on lasting value because it also is like it's scarce and there's only like ten thousand of them, and a lot of people think like you're owning a piece of internet history. Right. That's wild. Yeah. Um, yo, Matt. Okay, we got a question from our from our, our guy back there. Victor. Let's go. Uh, okay, he said he, so. He saw this website. People did his drop on called nifty gateway yeah yeah i'm familiar uh, but you could actually buy the nfts there with just your credit card and not needing a wallet do you think that's bad for the whole community because it's a step less to get nft like when people dropped this one dollar nft random people got it and sold it for tens of thousands of dollars Ooh. so the question is um you like you didn't need a wallet but like like there's no hard wallet i guess or oh interesting you yeah, yeah. With, like a visa or mastercard I, yeah you saying I mean, my, my whole thing is like, I'm all about democratizing access. You know what I mean? Like to me, it's like, I, I'm, I'm excited by the idea of like, of helping get people into the space. The issue is that because there's now like a lot of money on the line for some of these things, you yeah. get bots and like all that. And so uh, yeah. I know, sense. I know like around like the most recent people drop on Nifty, the idea was like, um, like they made you like answer questions about his work. And like, there was, they're, they're trying to build in, um, they're trying to build in like safeguards so that like 
bots couldn't do couldn't do it. But like, I think there were still a lot of bots that entered. It's like it's it's tough. Like, and so some, another way that people have tried to get around that is be like, you have to own a certain number of, of nifties or NFTs right. in my wallet to sense. like to be able to enter the the drawing. And like, obviously, there's still ways that like bots can get around that, but it just makes it a little bit tougher. But like, yeah, like you know, I I, I do think I do think that like artists, um, you know, like uh, artists artists should should care about that because um, nobody wants like it doesn't it doesn't help anyone if like bots get all the bots like win all the things and then put them right on the secondary and flip them and yeah, like right. it just it just like it doesn't th that that doesn't help like that doesn't like help nobody make a healthy that. ecosystem so like the the ethereum and all that helps with preventing bots because it's decentralized the blockchain um, I, I wouldn't say necessarily that it, it does unless there there have been safeguards built in upon it so like like by its very nature like it doesn't by default, but because smart contracts are programmable, there are some really interesting, innovative ways that like people who are like very, um, very savvy with these things and like smart contract programmers have have uh, devised ways to make it tougher for bots to like, Get you in. know, it's, it's like a much more advanced version of like the captcha things that we see all right. the time to like, yeah. you know, make sure you're a human. Like it's kind of like like a next level version of that. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's a balancing act too, because like, you know, I think for people, like from what I understand, he didn't want like people who were, who were collecting for the first time to be precluded from his auctions because like right. they didn't own an NFT, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's a bit of a trade off here and there. Like is, is smart contracts similar to almost HTML, for example, like how you program it and like, it's going to be over our heads, but people are going to like learn that language and cool. I just programmed this to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah, Solidity is like the language of, I'm, and I'm not a coder, but I've, I've just gathered enough from talking to, to the one people who are, um, that at least that's one of the leading ones. And yeah, like like the best way to think about like Ethereum is kind of like, like, a, like a, a decentralized computer operating system or like network built on on the on the blockchain and so yeah there, that, that's a that's a good comparison to be like it, it's it's programmable in the same way that like that's how people are building all these like games like marketplaces like you know all of these things that are like decentralized financial systems like lending yeah. and borrowing and things like and you know to be fair like ethereum isn't the only place that's happening but Ethereum like really pioneered like how the the smart contract and has they have the network effect. Yeah. So and you know there's there's some there are some conversations about you know getting the scalability right with Ethereum and there's right. definitely room for, for improvement in areas and um, they're they're going to be moving to like a, a version two which which is going to be um, better for the environment and also better for like um, you know not as high transaction costs because that can price people out but like yeah like. You know, it's it is it it's it's really interesting. Like Ethereum, like there's just like there's a ton of potential there. And so, you know, like a lot of times these these like they're like, like gets a little bit like tribalistic sometimes. Like you'll find like the Bitcoin maximalists on Twitter being like Bitcoin's the only real like crypto. And then you have like the people who are just like ETH is like the only one. And like I think there's a lot of room for everyone, you know? Like yeah. there's a lot yeah. of room for like creativity and cotton and, and uh and opportunities like this is this is a really game changing technology. So. Can, can smart contracts essentially eliminate the need for lawyers, for example? Like, uh -huh. that that's a good question. I, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I was like, when we do like, if you're just dealing with like me to Kevin and like, hey, I want to do this, I want to do business with you, blah blah blah. Like, the reason you need real life contracts because like I want to make sure he holds up his end of the bargain. Yeah, right but if the, the if the if open. the smart contract is in place and i'm like Nothing you'll you'll get you. your money when this action is completed Waited, yeah. i don't know how yeah to, yeah, yeah like it's definitely not going to eliminate the need for lawyers across the board obviously right, right, right. but but there are definitely some like base level like that like the idea almost like of escrow right like yeah. you, this thing gets put in escrow and then it's released once this like you can build like that gets built into the contract so like you like there's there's no risk of you like of it like of one side letting it down, you know. Um, wow. So yeah, like there, there is there, there, there are definitely some areas where like that can that that can move things forward. And right. um, yeah, because it's almost like this wall for smaller or mid-sized businesses where you have to get over that hump of being able to be legitimate, whether whether it's like things like lawyers or whatever it is, where it's like you know, hopefully that goes away, where you can kind of just operate on a small scale and not have to worry about getting screwed over. Totally. On that scale, I don't know. Totally, totally. And like, that's what I think is exciting is like, I think it's, it's never been more possible for like, 
an artist to like really kind of you know be able to like make a living off of a smaller following that's engaged or for someone who has a business idea to be able to kind of bootstrap it you know yeah, yeah. in the space it's a it, it's a very like empowering technology it's like it's quite diy and like you know it's uh i think that's why i'm like i'm drawn to it yeah and, and like the secondary sale thing that you were talking about too it's like i think it's a lot of artists biggest fear is like coming up with an idea or a song and then someone rips it off they make millions off of it and they didn't make anything off of it so it's totally. like that whole maybe that'll impact copyright and a lot of that stuff as well yeah like you know it's one thing we always say you know, obviously like the laws were written like never comprehending that like this kind of technology would exist like the law the legal books are always like 10 years behind the right. like the tech technology um and so it's a very interesting area like the legal side of this but um i do think that um there are some encouraging signs um like uh, like the Wyoming just passed this like DAO bill for like decentralized autonomous organizations, and um, it's like like the first like legally recognizable like like uh, sort of status for for those. And so like like uh, things will catch up. You so know? what does that what does that mean exactly? A decentralized organization like yeah yeah. So how does like, that work? It, it can it can mean a lot of different things. Like uh, they call them DAOs, uh, and it's cool because like. Uh, here's an example, like there are collector DAOs in the NFT space. So like, for example, if, if, you know, each of us have like a hundred Ethereum and we want to bid on something that's like, you know, 400 Ethereum, like, and, and we want to be like in the mix for it or whatever, like we could like band together as like a DAO, we could call it like cheat codes, medved DAO. We could probably make that better. Like, you know, <laughs> cheat fed, cheat fed DAO. Cheat fed. Yeah. Cheat fed, med code, yeah. 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 Med, code. Med, code. med code, med code, nice. Med, med code kind of sounds like a crypto native yeah. thing. Right? <laughs> yeah. um, so like we start med code DAO and like, you know, we, we kind of like, we can essentially have like collective governance over this and we can, we can actually, like we could launch our own governance token, like, you know, med or, or code or whatever, you know, um, that could like the, you know, we could issue it like equally to, to the members and then it, as it grows, like, you know, we have certain says and things and votes as to like where this, you know, where we invest things. And it's, it's really interesting. And so like there are, there are like collector DAOs and you're seeing a lot now, like you're seeing at some of these like really high profile auctions, um, you're seeing like one DAO going against another DAO. And it's oh, like, wow. and it, it's like, uh, it's kind of like it, it, I just realized this, so I'm thinking aloud right now, but it's kind of like, like the super teams in the NBA. Oh, you know, oh god! It's like, yeah. it's like all these collectors like banding together to like, like you, LeBron, yeah, Chris yeah. Bosh. We're, we're the big four. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> is I mean, also, is would you say that you can kind of create like an IPO without having to be like a big company, like you? You know what I'm saying? So yes and no. Like so that that happened a lot in 2017. I know the initial yeah. coin offerings, but the more ICO. just like if you were a company and you like you said, you want people to have these tokens can be involved in your company, but maybe you're not you know, a $200 million company and you wouldn't. Yeah. You know. Like as long as it's not a, like you just have to be really careful to ensure it's not like a security, but as, as like, as like, uh, defined by the SEC. Ah, fuck the uh, SEC. <laughs> but you know, it's, <laughs> it's, um, but like, but like the, I mean, the answer is yes, there are, there are definitely ways to like, to, to do that in a way that that works. And, um, and so it's just like, it's interesting because, you know, and like there's just you know, like there's a whole like alternate financial system being built on this technology too, where people are like trading and lending and like people can get loans like immediately without having to have like the same level of, you know, like everything that goes into, you know, our, our, our kind of archaic traditional financial system. And like, it's, it's just like, it's, I always joke, like the space moves so quickly, like a week is a month, a month is a year, like, right. you know, and so, and that was what was interesting too. It's like, you know, I feel like this you know since i got into the nft space i've learned so much and so much has happened and like march was like the longest month ever like i couldn't believe it was still march by the end you know <laughs> yeah, like yeah. and i was like it's only like this is crazy because it was just so many things were happening so quickly and um i don't know it's, it's just exciting it's an exciting space to be in and um you know I'd like I, it just touches on a lot of things that um i think are really needed and like especially like it always comes back to like empowering creators for me because you know it's just like Uplifting artistry. It's what, it's what, Hell yeah. yeah. It's, what, it's what we need to do. Wow. I love it, man. Yeah. I learned so much today. Yeah. <laughs> My brain's fried. Yeah, congrats like, on yeah. the new company, man. Congrats on NFT Thank now. you. That's, Thank that's you, awesome. man. Yeah. Check, check it out if you're listening. NFT now. Hell yes. That's huge. Anything else you want to plug? Um, I think that's about good. Um, I love it. Yeah. Matt Medved, everybody. Let's go. Cool. All great my socials. Yeah. TikTok, 
Do you have a TikTok? I'm not big on TikTok. You're, you got yeah. Instagram, Twitter. I know you're mad on Twitter. Instagram, Twitter are my, yeah. are my biggest ones. Twitter more so recently. I've been seeing it. I love tw- it, man. Twitter's big for the NFT space. Yeah, so, like, it's I, awesome. I didn't really use, to tw- use Twitter much, and now it's like kind of my go-to. You yeah, know? it's very they're very active yeah. on there for the and NFT. Cl- Clubhouse has been an interesting one, too. Um, but yeah, NFT now. Go. I didn't name it NFT later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> NFT <laughs> now and later. Exactly. Sick. Trying to play some games or yeah, what? So we usually play, yeah, we games should, on we should play one like round of a uh, rocket league if you're, if you're yeah, down to give it a shot. I'm let's go. go. All right, cool. We're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna be back. Back in the metaverse. Back in the metaverse, baby. All right, cool. All right guys. Cheat codes podcast. We got orange team. Look at my car. Orange team team. Medved. Let's go. let's go. And we got blue team. Team cheat codes, which is Kevy and Trevor today. Let's go. So let's, let's go. go. Like you guys good. ready? Yeah. Here we go. All right. Ooh. Look, I've always wanted this car. Three, <laughs> two, one, let's go. Oh, I already feel it. Oh yeah. Oh, that's hey, not no good. Way. No, I nicked I it. I just like did a somersault. Oh, it's going in. Go. No way. Oh, hit the top. Out of here. Oh no. Oh, beautiful. Okay. okay. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh no. Nice try. Here it comes. Here it comes. I'm coming in hot. Don't worry. You got this. Oh, oh. wrong way. Wrong way. Wrong way. Oh. Oh no. Damn it! <laughs> Dang. Oh, I missed it! I missed it! I missed oh. it! It's our shot! It's our shot! It's our shot right here! It yeah, oh, baby! Shit. I told you! I yeah. told you it was my shot! Yeah, it's okay, dude. It's okay. You guys set it up for me. We did. That was mad. You guys bad. gave me an assist, basically. Wow. The team Matt's. <laughs> yeah, Team Matt. <laughs> team Matt Medved. Here we go. There we go. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> here we go. Very nice, very nice. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? We got time, Kev. Oh my god, somebody's running into me. Is that, is that you, Matt? No. Yes, it is me, Matt. It's one of you, Matt. Oh, that's right. Oh, I need some boost. Oh, there's a. Okay. Oh no, not again. Oh! <laughs> I can't let this happen. No, no, no. It's not gonna happen. Blocked. Oh, beautiful. Nice. Clear it out of here. And I didn't hit it. Oh, they, oh, there we go. go, there we go, there we go. Oh, perfect setup, guys. Oh, no! Okay, still in our field, still in our area. Go, go. That was nice teamwork, Kevin. Yeah, hit go. me and I hit the ball. Double hit. Here it comes. Oh, oh this is prime. Oh, let's do it. Get it off, get it up there. It's gonna bounce, it's a fucking bouncer. Oh, I got to it. All right. Oh, fuck, overshot it. Oh, you guys overshot it again? I did so <laughs> How could you? It's so embarrassing. It oh, he set me up. No way. He, he set me up for the goal again. Yeah. Oh, Kevy, oh, Kevy with the assist. Ooh. <laughs> I, th- I, got, I got the color. No, that was the perfect assist. I'm colorblind. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. That was a nice block. He hit me hard. Yeah, yeah. He hit me out of there. That was definitely my intent. He's the muscle on the team. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, I'm gonna boost so hard right here. Here we go. This is it. <laughs> that was the hardest boost I've ever seen. <laughs> oh. Whoa. Oh. oh. Give it to me. Oh. Here we go. Oh. Get out of my way. Hit it over to me, Kev. Oh. Oh, fuck. I hit it too hard. No, hit it harder. Oh. Oh, oh no. Yeah, no. Oh. 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 I think I blew up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like what the hell? I didn't know about that. I didn't hear about that when we were going over. Oh, this is. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah, we forgot to tell you about the blowing up thing. That's okay. Oh, fucking! I hate jumping. Just... Oh, bro, no, not. Let's oh, go, let's go. Oh, nice oh block, wow. Man. Nice go. block. There we go. I'm going for the goal. Oh, I barely missed it. Oh, it's perfect, though. What a beauty alley oop. We're trying. We're trying. We got this. Where's the alley oop? I'm just setting it up. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! No, it's okay. It's okay. He's not gonna get. How long? How long has this game been out? Is this, uh, uh, like for a while. Ten right? years. Okay, okay. Oh god! Oh, look at that reverse. <laughs> Woo! They're the people that actually play like all day. They're totally. So good at this. Oh yeah, yeah. Damn it! They fly, like literally. See, like in the future. Oh, this, it's in! Game, it's would... in! Half court. What are we doing? We're doing it. We're doing it. <laughs> 
I love it. Team Medved, 3-0, 3-0. There's two minutes left, guys. It's, yeah. it's definitely all me. It's definitely yeah, all me. It is. To see, like, in the future of this game, we would actually all own these cars. They'd be <laughs> NFTs, and they would yeah. all be going up in value. Oh, my yeah. God. Based on, like, how oh, yeah. many, how many weird game goals we were scoring. Yeah, yeah mine's a collectible oh, for sure. I think Kevy's value is going down. Right now. Yeah, mine's <laughs> the stock is tanking. Oh, this is perfect. Ooh. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. No, it's always... Oh, there I got it. Right. No. Yes. Yeah. That was my bad. We still got time, we still got time. There's still time, there's still We're time. Right. I, I, I put it right in the middle of the field. That's a big no-no. Right, let's, no. let's focus here. Short goals. Don't waste any time, we got this. Oh my goodness, beautiful. What a beautiful shot. Just right off the backboard like that. There we go. Off, it's in, it's in, it's in, it's in. Oh, no, it. save, that. save. Matt blocked it. <laughs> Fuck, I hit too hard. It's going in. There it is. No! I'm trying to stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got time. Oh, damn it. We got time. We got time. Here we go. You guys oh, are too hyped. God. Yeah, they're mounting a furious comeback. Yes. Never surrender. Ooh. Oh, I got boomed. It's an arrow. It's an arrow. I got fucking yeah. boomed. Oh, come on. Just get the green car. Yes, in our field. Oh my yes. God. Yes. Oh, uh oh. Oh, no, 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 One no, minute. No. Come on, we got time. Come on. Ah, oh, man. Oh, no, no. Get no. out of here. Oh, there you go, Trev. Nice defense. Hit it. Hit it. Oh. Here we go. Ooh. Ah. Oh, it's right there. It's right there! Oh, yes! No! For your 30 seconds, come on. Oh. Yes, cleared it. Well, good work, good work, good work. <laughs> we got it, it's going back, it's going back. No, no, no. Oh, it's going in. Oh, fuck me. It's going in, oh! Let's do it. <laughs> I missed uh. it. Oh, there you go, Trav. Oh my fucking God. We have 10 seconds. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah! No, I fucked it up! I fucking fucked it up! No! Clear it, clear it. No! yes. Oh, we were so close. Both of us missed it. Yes. Team Medved for the win. Team that Medved. was good. That was All right. good. Good All game, right. guys. All right. We almost had it. We did it. We did it. I mean, the win was just so so oh. much greater because I could see the despair in your guys' face. I'm heartbroken right now. <laughs> that's, just, that's, that's you with the 573 and me with the 30, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> Team Medved. <laughs> All right, guys. Woo! Cheat Codes Podcast. The company is NFT now. Make sure you like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Much love. Thanks for having me. Thank you. <laughs>